Well, I get a great deal of joy out of music, and um, it, it's, uh, it just has a, has a great deal of significance for me. As blood flows through the veins, I think music does too for me. First time when I played with her, I, uh, you know, looked at her hands and um, this ability to play uh, hard things so easy and brilliant. Uh, it seems that she doesn't have uh, technical limits. Born and raised in Philadelphia, Marcella DeCray began studying the harp as a child. Having honed her skills under Mildred Dilling in New York, as a teenager she went to France to study for the first of several summers with Henriette Regnier. After giving her first recitals, Marcella wrote to Regnier of her desire to grow both musically and artistically. I have begun to discover the importance, along with the mind and the body, of the soul. And mine seems so young and immature, I must develop it. I want to become an artist, not just a harpist. After several years on the recital circuit, she began orchestral work, playing first with the Metropolitan Opera Orchestra and then the Philadelphia Orchestra under Eugene Ormandy, where she stayed for 11 years. Once Ormandy arrived, he um, started to revise the strings. He had been a violinist. Uh, he started to revise the strings sound in such a way that made it more vibrant and more, um, more present and more rich. Um, and less classical, less restrained. I think it was a wonderful process to be part of, to see how you could take something, and particularly since, as I've said, harp music was rather insignificant, to take a piece of insignificant music and look for whatever it had that was worthwhile in it. As hard as you had to ferret, nonetheless find it. And bring it to the fore and present an absolutely impeccable performance. As a student in Philadelphia, I heard the Philadelphia Orchestra weekly from the third row and wide-eyed watched Marcella on stage, displaying her faultless technique and inimitable style. Little could I have imagined that one day we would be colleagues in San Francisco. To me, Dear Marcella has always been an inspiration, both as a great artist and also as a consummate professional. On top of all of that, she is by far the most admired and beloved member of our orchestra. I first became aware of um, new music just before I left Philadelphia, about 1962. In 1963, she moved to San Francisco, where she continued orchestral work with the San Francisco Opera Orchestra, the San Francisco Symphony, and later the San Francisco Ballet Orchestra. She began teaching at the San Francisco Conservatory of Music, and in 1973, she co-founded the San Francisco Contemporary Music Players. So I always had in my mind um, the essence of the New York ensembles for um, contemporary music. And I, it just stuck in the back of my mind. And um, then when Charles Boone suggested that I um, play in a Bring Your Own Pillow concert, uh, after having shoved a, a burial piece at me, um, which seemed absolutely inscrutable, and um, uh, Jean-Louis LaRue and I were both playing in the symphony, and uh, he was very much interested in the harp, and he introduced himself shortly after I started playing with the symphony. And um, so between the three of us, we got together and, and I suggested that the New York New Music Ensembles were just so fabulous, and especially Speculum Musicae, um, that it would be wonderful if there was something on the West Coast to counterbalance all that stuff on the East Coast. And why not San Francisco? I've always associated her with uh, new music 
and furthering new music. And of course, I was thrilled to be her colleague at the Conservatory of Music. There are many, many harpists and many, many fine harpists, but very few who are so devoted to bringing uh, new music to life. Marcella Jacre is a wonderful instrumentalist who has promoted music by contemporary composers all her life. Her understanding of new musical idioms made it possible for her to perform unusual music and revolutionize the narrow scope in which the harp was perceived in the past. I would like to express my thanks to her rendition of Continuum, which was commissioned by the American Harp Society. One of the most outstanding and unique things about Marcella de Cray is that she always considered these new works on the same level as all the traditional music. It wasn't traditional music and then new music. They're all the same. It's just music. Dear Marcella de Cray, Believe it or not, it was only last night that I was finally able to hear the cassette of Sky Music. Your performance is marvelous. I'm dazzled at how so cleanly, wisely, and sonorously you bring forth colors and phrases which I myself didn't realize were in the piece. You are the best harpist I've ever heard, and I salute you. But I found the most um, connected was the hand position that Marcella had with mine. It made the most sense. And it, was, it made the most sense in terms of being able to play this really complicated, gnarly music that she was commissioning and working on. You know, and she would share all this with me and how to do it, all these difficult effects. Way ahead of her time, like the program from Grace Cathedral in 1974, um, Scordatura, which means uh, tuning the harp differently, pre-tuning it in a different way than normal. Composers are just beginning to work with that now in 2006. Throughout her career, Marcella has championed contemporary composers' works written for her and performed by her. Perhaps no one has done more in promoting new music for the harp by outstanding composers. She continues to be a vital force in the world of the harp. As a young harpist, Marcella had written to Renier, stating her discovery that the soul was important in her musical development. Keep this letter, Renier wrote to herself. This is a sincere harpist who has a soul.